Hey everyone, hopefully you're doing well. Welcome to the Jesus King podcast. Uh, how you doing, Emil? I'm doing well, mate. How are you? Good, good. Uh, today's topic, we're actually speaking about waiting on God. Yeah. So I know it's um, it's a topic that can be a bit um, easy when it comes to the theology of it. Yeah. But it's definitely difficult to live out because yeah. we're obviously, we, we don't like waiting. We like everything to be done at that very moment. Mm -hmm. You know, we like to see results. And if we put ourselves in like, say, Noah's situation, where he had to preach as he was building the ark, and he had to do that for 120 years, mm -hmm. yet not one soul listened to him. The only people that went into the ark was his family. Yep. And not only him, you look at Moses when he obviously was, you know, dealing with the dispute between an Egyptian and a Hebrew and he killed the Egyptian. Mm -hmm. He, the next day, obviously they said, you know, who are you to judge between us? Because there was another conflict, but it was between two Hebrews and he had to run away and in running away, even though he knew his calling but then it was obviously later confirmed by God. He had to stay 40 years in the desert yep. before he had to come back to Egypt and get God's people out. So you're talking about not few weeks, few months. Yes. You're talking about years. And even with Abraham or Abram before he was given his son. Yeah, that, that too. That yeah. too. It, it's, it's definitely... I mean, it's encouraging in some sense mm -hmm. where you think these people waited for years and God moved, right? He was faithful to his promise. But sometimes it's not about the waiting. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people have that doubt. With waiting, often you get doubt. Yeah. And the doubt is maybe I'm waiting for nothing. Like mm -hmm. there's nothing coming my way. Um, there's no solution. Yeah. So it can be a bit difficult. What's your opinion on that? Well, I think, I think, well, first I'd like to just kind of touch on the actual subject that we're doing, which is waiting. And what are we actually waiting for? Like, what is it that we're waiting for? What are we, what are we talking about really? And I think um, just to make it very clear to the listeners. And I think what we're talking about is waiting on the Lord and what he wants to do in our life. So whether that's a, a prayer that we've been um, asking to be answered, whether it's waiting for our calling, whether it's it's just in general, we're talking about waiting for for God to answer. Okay. Whatever that cool. means. So that's that's what we're talking about. Um, just so that it's clear to the listeners, I think um, uh, just that, that way they're with us. And my opinion on waiting is, I think sometimes it's not only about you know, waiting for when God wants it to start. It's also about, are we where God wants us to be for this to start? And sometimes that's usually the culprit. It's not that we haven't waited enough. It's not about a time. It's about a place. It's where are you? You're not where God wants you to be. Mm. So God is waiting for you to be where you need to be. And the only reason why you're not there is because you lack faith, because you, you're not trusting in the Lord. Because you haven't submitted. Because you're still fighting. You're still like, oh, I want to be in control. Well, you can't be in control and then God has his will in your life. You can't have both. You can't have the cake and eat it too. Cool. So the idea is that sometimes we think we're waiting on God, but it's the other way around. Right. God is waiting on us yeah. for us to be prepared and ready. Yeah. And then he can accomplish what he wants to do in our lives. Amen. And often... I think there is a false sense of um, belief in, in the sense that sometimes you have people think that everything just falls into the yes, right place. Yeah. And because we put the word God into the equation, mm -hmm. it just happens. Yet we see many times people do get disappointed in the Bible yeah. for making wrong decisions that brings wrong outcomes, yeah. bad outcomes. So I, th I think it's it's a good point that you brought up is that you prepare yourself, um, you equip yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the th 
ways we can equip ourselves is by understanding the scripture. Amen. Right. Um, that's one thing in in Timothy, as 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 Paul was encouraging Timothy, is saying this is God breathed. It's it's inspired, and the person that knows it, that studies it, is ready for every good work. Yeah. So imagine that is for me to be equipped in scripture qualifies me to be ready to serve God because I understand the mind, the will, and the goal of God. Yeah. I know what he wants to do, for example, in the church, in my life, in my family. Therefore, that's that's in a way preparing me, making me ready to, to be able to serve in those areas. But if a person doesn't know what God's will is for yourself personally or for your family or for the church, it makes it really difficult because you, you're not sure where to go with it. Yeah. Yeah. But, I think God put this in my heart to say this. The sheep know the shepherd's voice. Mm. So they hear him when he calls and they know it's him. If we do not know our Lord's voice, we won't hear him when he calls. We'll just ignore it. Yeah. That's so we, John 10. Yeah. So we need to know his voice. We need to be able to discern where the Lord wants us to and when the Lord is speaking to us and where he wants us to go so that when he calls on us, we listen. And I actually went through something and this kind of humbled me in my approach and how I pray to God and how I ask him for things when I ask him for anything. <laughs> and um, I, I was unemployed at the time and I was really desperate for a job. So I was praying to God, God, I've applied for this job. I need this job. Give me this job. Give me this job. Please give me this job. God answered. Here's the job. Guess what happened? I hated it. I hated that job. And I was like to God, why would you give me this if you knew it was going to be horrible for me? And then God put it in my heart and he put this, this thought in my mind and in my heart. And it answered why he did that. It's you asked for it. He didn't say, let your will be done in my life. You said, give me, give me. Here you go. So it was like a lesson. It was a lesson. It's <laughs> it's not about what you want at that time. It's about what does God want for you? What's the bigger picture? I do not know what's going to happen. I don't know what this job entails. God does. I don't know what the next step is. God does. I'll just rely on his will to be done in my life. God knows what I need. God knows my pain. God knows that I'm if I'm hungry. God knows if I need clothes. God knows if I'm thirsty. He knows what I need. So I just pray that his will be done in my life. And in the meantime, I live obediently. Yeah. Uh, well, that's what the Bible actually speaks about. It speaks about that you can ask anything in his name mm -hmm. um, that obviously results into the glory of the Father. Mm -hmm. And as, as you mentioned that sometimes we're waiting and we find something that we think it's a solution, but it's not going to glorify God. God at the end and it's not going to benefit us mm -hmm. so therefore in your case it becomes a lesson to learn yeah and a lesson to learn it's a good thing mm -hmm. but at the same time it's a detour it is yeah it right? took I mean it took wasted my time and <laughs> wasted my effort and it was pretty upsetting and yeah, yeah. It, was, it was it wasn't fun it wasn't a good experience because it kind of gave me this hope and then that hope was taken from me and that was all was all my fault it's funny because as adults we do make that mistake but that definitely reminds me of my relationship with my kids because mm -hmm. often many times i say don't touch this don't touch this don't touch this because it could be maybe something a bit sharp or something hot mm -hmm. but then it gets to that certain stubbornness where they keep on asking mm -hmm. for it and i'm like well it's not gonna hurt them badly but it's gonna teach them a lesson I'm like try your luck and, and once they do that they're like oh that really hurts i'm like that's why i told you not to do that so i th i think it's a it, it's a good point that you brought and it can branch off to to the to the side of when we wait, often we get desperate mm -hmm. and we try and find fast uh, far solutions. Yeah. Uh, I think that happens many times in the Bible. Yeah. We see God is telling his own people to do things a certain way. 
And they were like, no, I'm just going to do it my way. God told Moses to come up. And he was there for 40 days with God in the mountain. What did the people on the ground do? <laughs> they built an idol. They couldn't wait. Yeah. They even complained to Aaron. They said, he's not coming back. He's gone. He's not coming back. And, and I think that sense of desperation, it can lead us to seek things other than God, which is what Israel did. They saw an idol more than they saw God. Mm hmm and i think in in waiting and i know it's it's easy said than done but you have to trust in god you have to wait on god and be prepared when god speaks because sometimes i know people there are certain people that like to wait yeah because they they're not that um how can i say it? they're not that ambitious right mm. for example in, in ministry a church could be praying about a certain event, right? There are people that are not interested about the event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's pray. Yeah. It happens, it happens. doesn't happen. Yeah. I'm happy to wait another 20, 30 years for it. So I, I think it's, those people, they don't care about the results anyway. Um, obviously, it's they're, they're, mm. they're not the, the rule. They're the exception. Um, I was actually just having a thought. When Adam, sorry, when Eve was tempted by the snake, yeah, if she had waited and said, you know what, I want to, what you just said, I'm just going to see if I can clarify what you just said with God and see what he says. Mm. I don't think they would have thought, Phil, if, just wait and see what God says. Yeah. See what's God's opinion about what you just said. Just wait. But no, okay, let's, he's a liar. Okay, I'll, I'll believe you. It's just sometimes just be patient and make the right decision. Just see what happens because I, I know that sometimes like let's say we're waiting for something to happen and then we see a an alternate route and we're tempted to take it right because it's like oh here's an answer but maybe that's not what god wants for us maybe we should just be patient and be and like kind of evaluate the situation and pray about it and not be too quick to jump on you know a certain path that we don't know where it leads to yeah definitely that that's that's actually an important part. Um, yeah, it's it. From memory, I can mention a lot of things as well, man. Waiting at times sucks, but it's part of building your character. It, it's part of understanding that God is not working on your timing; you are working on His timing. Yeah, and it's also especially when it comes. Um, one of the personal things that I've experienced is that when you share the gospel, for example, to your family members or to your friends, yeah. you like instant results. But then there are people that are more mature in the faith. They're like, I'm not only going to preach to this person, I'm going to be praying for them. I'm mm -hmm. going to be a blessing in their life. And you see them waiting and waiting. And those non-believers... They look at you and they're like, oh, I can see the fruits. That person is consistent. He's showing love to me. He's being honest with me. And they make that decision to come to Christ. Yeah. That makes it worthwhile. But some people is like, oh, you rejected the gospel. You're going to hell. Yeah. That, that's it. It's, it's as if you've just taken your last breath. Yeah. But they don't understand that God was waiting on them as well. God was right? patient with Peter. Yeah. Was, especially Peter. He was patient with Paul. He was patient with, yeah, he was patient with a lot of people and he didn't have to be. No, he didn't have to. And, and that's, that's the part is when, when you look at yourself and you see how patient God was with you mm -hmm. and he didn't just pass judgment on you. He was waiting and making yeah. sure that, okay, I'm going to give you time. I know your life. I know the path that you're taking, mm. but I'm going to be patient with you. And that's what Peter speaks about. Speaks about that God is long-suffering, doesn't desire anyone to perish. So we can learn a lot from God in the sense that if he's patient on me and he's waiting on me, 
I have to be patient sometimes too. Yeah. And I never, like, I, I didn't really think about it that much when I was immature in my faith. Because it's like, you know, when, when kids, they're not, they're not, they don't have that empathy and sympathy. They can't put their, like, put themselves in the other person's mm -hmm. shoes. They're incapable of doing that. Their brain's still yeah. developing. They don't have those capabilities. That's why most kids are psychos. <laughs> um, they're, they're cruel, man. Like, I'll be honest with you. The yeah. cruelest people are kids. They have no filter. They don't, they can't think, what will that person feel? We're, and and when we are immature and immature in our faith we're the same way we only see what we're going through god how can you let this happen to me i've been patient and i've been this and then you look at the prodigal son the the the, the metaphor that's there you know and that story that's there it's the father waiting for his son just waiting 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 being patient that's god with us mm. he's been waiting he's been waiting his long like how many however many years it is for us to come to him and then when we finally get there, it's like, we don't want to wait. We want everything to be, you know, we want our crown. We want, we want to be more than conquerors straight away. And it's like, yeah. but it's not time yet. <laughs> everything comes in order. You just, you just came back to me. Yeah. There's steps. You right. can't just skip to the inheritance. You know, it's just, you have to wait. You have to, there's, there's a process to things. There's, there's a time. And sometimes it's instant. Sometimes, you know, we're already where God wants us to be and, it's done. He can implement his will in our life fully. Yeah. But sometimes we're stubborn with him. And like, for example, like Jonah. And we take a detour. And now, ultimately, what could have been quicker now has gone, you know, the long route. And it's going to take longer. Still accomplish the same thing, but it's taking longer because you fought him. Mm. Right? And yeah. That's, yeah, that's actually a very good point. Yeah, it's definitely a very good point is that we need to be patient with others. And when you come to Christ, it, feel, you, it feels like you want fireworks to happen and just jump into the into the action straight away. I mean, one of the basic things you have in the church is, for example, your leadership, right? Yeah, you, you have leadership in the church. And Paul says in 1 Timothy 3, don't put a new convert. Yeah. Like see their life, examine them, know their walk with God. And there are people, they would come and they're like, I want to do everything. They're like, hold on, calm down, take a step back. We need to know who you are. Yeah. No, not only that, it's just for the person's sake as mm -hmm. well. Like you're going to be making a lot of mistakes along the way. Mm -hmm. So I, I would be very careful with that. But it's... It's something, as I said earlier, it's very difficult to do. It's easy to speak about, but it's definitely something that can be a challenge to a person to to calm down. And and you could be in a storm, right? You could be in a boat in the middle of the storm and you could look up and say, God, are you expecting me to wait? Like, look what's going on. And that's what they did to Jesus. He was asleep yeah. in the boat. And they woke him up like, are you going to let us die here? Like, how could you, how could you sleep? And, and Jesus had his timing. Even with Mary, she's like, could you do something about the wine? It's like, it's not my time yet. So you, you had a lot of people that came to Jesus and had, you know, problems where they felt like it's either the solution is now or never. And s sometimes we just got to step back and be like, maybe I have some blind spots that I can't see. Maybe God wants me to, t to take me a bit further. That could be, that could mm. be something. But I know obviously there are times where you're like, it's now or never, right? Yeah. <laughs> there are situations like, there are situations like yeah. that where you need an instant answer. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. And and God does come through. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. God and comes through. I, I think some people expect this fairy tale ending most of the time. Like, mm. oh, I'm a Christian, so therefore I shouldn't be suffering. When it's like, dude, have you read the Bible? Like, have you read about the Christian? What what Christians are going to go through? What you're going to have to go through as a Christian? It's nothing but suffering. Like most of the time. But our hope is not in this world. It's in the next. Um. So sometimes we expect this fairy tale ending where it's like we're gonna be happy and we're gonna be well off in this life, and it's like, man, it's 
your goals, your priorities are not straight. They're not good. Mm. So you're in for a lot of disappointment because you've set yourself up for disappointment. Instead of yeah. instead of building up on what matters, you've built a you built a house on 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 sand. Yeah. So when the waves hit, which they will, your house is going to crumble. That's why I think it's wiser for us to put ourselves in on a foundation where we can wait and wait out the waves and wait out the storm. And that's why we have to build our foundation on a rock. And that way we can wait, we can weather the storm, we can weather the waves and we can be strong. And I think having that, having that faith and hope in Christ and having that perseverance and, and that character is what gets us to the, to the point where we have a lot of patience. If we don't have that perseverance, if we don't have that house that's built on the rock, we're not going to have patience because we can't like our house is going to crumble any second. True. This false expectation is definitely yeah. something very important. That reminds me of the person that was waiting for the well to be stirred. So Beth someone is it can... Bethesda? Is it, what is it? Oh, I forgot the name of it. I think it's Bethesda. Yeah. That's why I didn't even mention it. Um, but he was waiting for it to be stirred by an angel. And obviously there's different um, teachings on, on that. It was a story. pagan belief. Yeah. But... He was waiting for that, and every time he got near, apparently it was gone. The That chance that he was holding on to was gone. And then he put so much hope into it that he was laying around the well. Like, imagine that your whole life revolves over something. And sometimes we do that. If, if God is, well, we think God is not pulling through, but if God is not doing it, I'll find something and I'll revolve my life around it because that's where my hope mm -hmm. is. And then just Jesus comes out of nowhere, heals him, and the well means nothing now. Yeah, I that, think I, I mean sorry, the pool. The means pool, nothing. yeah, yeah. And I, I think in the chosen it did it pretty well because he's like to uh, in in the chosen he's like, um, I've been waiting for so long. He's like, I know, but you know that there's nothing here for you. And, and and that was pretty, oh, I haven't watched they, the episode. They 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 build on sorry I should have said spoiler, <laughs> um, but yeah it's uh, they build on it of course but it's uh, pretty interesting to see that that perspective because um, that's how I would see it as well. It's just he put his faith in something and that's it's not for him. It's not it's not going to help him. Your faith was put in the wrong thing. Your faith should have been in Christ. You sh should have been in God. And, um, yeah. And then once, once, you know, Jesus heals him, takes his bed up and, and goes and goes. <laughs> that, that That's a, actually a very good point. That's definitely a very good point that we can share about the episode is that when you're waiting, don't get desperate. Don't look into something else. Mm. Wait and rely on God. That's mm -hmm. something very important for every Christian to do. Um, there will be challenges while you wait. You could be going through a storm or life could be just boring. You're just waiting. Equip yourself. Uh, prepare yourself when God calls you. Yeah. And uh, when God calls you, be zealous for the calling of God. Because sometimes we're waiting, waiting, waiting. But then when God gives you a certain answer, you're like, that's not what I was expecting. Yeah, well, I wanted something else. I, I mean, I know some some Christians that have been waiting on something that's not greedy or selfish. Mm -hmm. Most Christians don't wait for things like that. They're waiting for someone they truly, truly love to come to Christ. And they've been patient. God, please heal this person. Please bring them to you. I love this person. I care about this person. And they're pouring their heart out to Christ. And sometimes it's just... Well, wouldn't you say that's a bit of a different situation it is man because you're it's... touching the free will of man like of course, if, of if course. you say god changes persons mm -hmm. of course what they mean yeah. is like show them show influence. him influence <laughs> him you know obviously we don't we're not talking about you know yeah um you know irresistible grace, grace. uh we're talking about um you know god showing that person who he is and mm. changing that person um by the not a divine intervention where it's like irresistible but like one that's yeah. like you're seeing god and you're finally submitting and sometimes it's just 
that person has free will doesn't want it yeah i think that that's something we can definitely pray but at the same time we need to understand as we were talking about way earlier mm. that if you understand the nature of god and how god does things you also understand that when the outcome comes you you kind of get the idea that all right god was doing something but he that was. person had a choice it. yeah to but, not respond to it but i can understand some people's frustrations especially when it's their children oh. their brothers and sisters their yeah. wives or husband let's say if someone converted but their spouse didn't or their children stayed whatever mm. they are um it's pretty hard yeah it's yeah. very hard i can't, i can't imagine and my heart goes out to you all truly um it's painful it is every one of us ha- have a family member or Definitely. a friend that we really wish they could come to christ yeah and i think i don't wish hell on anyone to be honest with you. <sighs> i no one i can't like even the worst of human beings because it's yeah. it's eternal man <laughs> it's eternal no matter how bad they are i don't wish them to be in hell forever yeah you know i think well well that ties in with god's desire god desire not to be perished mm-hmm. and you look at ezekiel god doesn't want a, a person to die in their sin and That's their right. wickedness he wants them to turn away and repent and live a life of holiness That's right so i i think that's a great desire to have as christians mm-hmm. um do you have any final comments on waiting i think i think we've said the we, most important parts yeah we we did uh i just want to encourage you as my final statement to this um to wait on god don't let doubt come into your heart right. um be filled with faith and trust that god can get you through it um i also encourage you to prepare yourself while you're waiting be in the word pray fast worship the lord continue to deepen your relationship mm-hmm. with god that's something very important for all of us um it's not waiting in the sense of you put your feet on the table you start watching tv and you're like okay i'm just waiting for god to do something we're actively waiting mm-hmm. we're That's, obedient yeah i like that we're we're actually actively waiting so while we're waiting we're still serving god we're mm-hmm. still serving his people we're still evangelizing we're still living a holy life um and we do that to our best of our ability of course but don't take it for granted don't think waiting is you slacking off um sitting on the couch and expecting that the roof to come off and god shows up that's not how it works yeah be diligent be zealous be active and be hungry for god Amen. that's that's something very important for us so if you if you're waiting for something and you came across this video and you think I feel like God's speaking to me through it. I would say so. I would actually say so. Yeah. Maybe that's a message for you guys to to know that waiting for God is is not an illusion. It's not something that it's a it's a false belief or a false hope. No. God always carries out his plan. That's and right. he always comes uh comes forward and and fulfills everything that um his people need so i'm just encouraging you to wait on the lord yep. as we all do is it a challenge of course it is does yep. it take time absolutely but god's going to get you through it yep. so god bless you all um and take care we'll see you next time take care everyone